In this section, I am going to talk about function values. In particular, we will be evaluating functions at different values of x. Functions are often denoted by letters such as capital F, small g, capital G, and others. So remember that these are just notations. Suppose that f is a function, then for each number x in its domain, the corresponding image in the range is designated by this symbol, and we read this as f of x. Take note that f of x does not mean f times x. f here represents a function, x is your input, sort of, and f of x gives us the image of x under the function f. We can view functions as machines. So this is the function f, this is your machine f. And you put your inputs, and this is the input x. When it goes outside your machine, the result is already the output, and you call that f of x. If I put an input 1 here, when it goes out of the machine, the output of 1 would be f of 1. So the machine f only accepts numbers from the domain of the function because if you put, let's say, something which does not belong in the domain, there will be no output. And of course, for each input, there is exactly one output because f is a function. For every element x, there corresponds exactly one element of y. Here are a few terminologies that you need to know of. Suppose that y is equal to f of x is a function. x here is an independent variable and y is a dependent variable because y depends on the values of x. Take note that any symbol can be used to represent the independent and dependent variable. Suppose that f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 3x. Let us evaluate the following. What is this function saying? It is saying that whatever is your input x, the output is going to be 2 times the input squared minus 3 times the input. So hence, what is now f of 3? f of 3 is going to be, the input is 3, so we have 2 times 3 squared minus 3 times 3. I am just substituting 3 for x. So this is PEMDAS, you perform the exponent first, so 2 times 9. So we get 18 minus 9, which is equal to 9. Next, we want negative f of x. So this is just the negative of f of x, which is f of x is 2x squared minus 3x. So that's negative 2x squared plus 3x. What about this one? We have f of negative x. If you already have expressions involving x inside your function as inputs, it would be better if you will represent your f of x as, let's call this f of star. What is this saying? f of star is equal to 2 times your input star squared minus... 3 star. So therefore, I will just look at this one, my f of star. And what is now f of negative x? I will substitute negative x for star. Alright? So that's 2 times negative x squared minus 3 times star. In this case, negative x. So it's 2x squared plus 3x. Next, let's have f of x plus f of 3. Substitute f of x, 2x squared minus 3x. Plus, we have already found a value for f of 3. f of 3 is equal to 9. So, plus 9. That's it. Next, we have a different input for f which involves x. First, write f of x as f of star is equal to 2 star squared minus 3 star. I will just look at this. I will substitute 3x for star. So that's 2 times 3x 
the entire 3x, you square it, minus 3 times star is 3x. So this is PEMDAS exponent first. The square of 3x is 9x squared. This is 9x. So that's 18x squared minus 9x. Let's have some more examples. We have 3 times f of x. So this is 3 times f of x, which is 2x squared minus 3x. So that's 6x squared minus 9x. I have an expression inside your f which involves x. f of x plus 3. I will write my f of x as f of star again. We now have f of x plus 3 is now equal to 2 times x plus 3 squared minus 3 times x plus 3. Order of exponents, get the square of x plus 3 first. That is x squared plus 6x plus 9. This one here is minus 3x minus 9. So we have 2x squared plus 12x plus 18 minus 3x minus 9, which can be simplified as 2x squared, 12x minus 3x is 9x, 18 minus 9 is plus 9. Next, we have f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. You will see this expression later on when you study calculus. What is f of x plus h first? f of x plus h is going to be, I have my f of star here, so that's 2. I will replace x plus h for star. So that's x plus h squared minus 3 times x plus h minus f of x is, don't forget to put it inside the parenthesis because you are going to subtract the entire 2x squared minus 3x all over h. We expand first x plus h, so that's x squared plus twice the product of x and h plus h squared. Distribute 3, so that's minus 3x minus 3h. And let's get rid of the parenthesis here. Minus 2x squared plus 3x all over h. Let's distribute the 2 here. We have 2x squared plus 4xh plus 2h squared. And let me just copy this. Two x squared minus two x squared gets cancelled. Negative three x plus three x also gets cancelled out. Hence, we are left with four x h plus two h squared minus three h all over h. But the numerator has a common factor of h, so that's four x plus two h minus three all over h h gets cancelled out, and therefore, this is equal to 4x plus 2h minus 3. For our next example, we have g of x is equal to square root of x minus 2. We are asked to evaluate these expressions over here, and they all involve expressions that are no longer equal to x. So, hence, I will write g of x as g of star as my guide square root of star minus 2. So for the first one, g of x cubed, I will substitute x cubed for star. So that's square root of x cubed minus 2, right? Next, for g of r plus s, I will substitute r plus s for star. So that's square root of r plus s minus 2. G of x over a, I will substitute x over a for star here. 
So that's square root of x over a minus 2, which we can simplify as, I will turn this into a single fraction. So that's a x minus 2a. Or if you want, you can also rationalize, multiply both numerator and denominator by square root of a. So that's square root of a x minus 2a all over a. For our last example, we will evaluate this. You will also see this expression when you study calculus. So first, g of x plus delta x. So I will substitute x plus delta x for star. So that square root of my star is x plus delta x minus 2 minus g of x. g of x is square root of x minus 2 all over delta x. In our next lesson, we are going to discuss the domain of a function.